Beatles. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's episode of the Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is entitled Two Rackets in One. Like all rackets, the trucking racket and the poultry racket are made possible by the connivance of dishonest politicians with underworld crooks. At present, York City is faced with two wars, a trucking war and a poultry war. Tribute is levied against all out-of-town trucking concerns who wish to deliver goods in York City by a group of racketeers calling themselves the Modern Truckers Protective Association. Also, all trucking concerns are warned particularly against hauling poultry to or from certain poultry dealers who are not members of the Metropolitan Poultry Dealers Protective Association. Another racket. As our story opens, Dan Garrett, who is really the Blue Beetle, is cruising around with Officer Mike Manigan in the police I hate driving along under the elevated. Yeah, me too. You can't tell when some skittery female decides to cross against the light. Not much room to swerve, and those L pillars don't give an inch when you hit them. Hey, look at that truck ahead. Oh, oh boy, what a smash up. Hey, park the car, Danny, while I run ahead and see if anybody's hurt. All right, Mike, I'll be right with you. Come on now. Here, stand back now. Stand back. Stand back. Let's have a look. Hey, who's that lion there? That's the driver of the truck. Yeah, he turned out to avoid hitting a pedestrian. And got it himself. Oh, oh, he's in pretty bad shape. Uh, some of you phone City Hospital for the ambulance. Now make it snappy. I'll go, officer. There's a phone in my store. Yes, the water. I brought Oh, thank you, lady. I'll just... find out, Mike. Well, the driver here turned his truck to avoid hitting a pedestrian and lost control, I guess. And his truck turned over on him. Oh, the poor devil. He, he, he got it bad, I'm thinking. Mm, the truck belongs to the Intercity Trucking Company. Yeah. They're one of the trucking companies who refused to join the MTPA. Yeah, that's right. What became of the pedestrian? Well, I don't know. I... Did any of you people see the person whose stupidity and haste caused this accident? Yeah, yeah, I saw him. He was standing on the corner for some time. And when he saw that truck coming, he started running across the street. He stopped suddenly. And when he saw the truck crash, well, he ran away. Uh, which way did he run? Across the street, the way he started? No, no, the opposite direction. Well, what do you think, Danny? This wreck was planned, and I think I know who planned it. Calling cars 42 and 47. 47? Calling That's cars us, Danny. Yeah, I wonder what's up. 47. Go to 1327 Rankin Street. There is a fire in a garage. Come on, Danny, Calling let's step cars on it. 42 and 47. Looks as if the Modern Truckers Protective Association was out for blood this time. And why, Danny? That garage is where the Intercity Trucking Company parks its trucks. Calling car 47. Calling car 47. Go to 3rd and Pine Street. There's been an accident. Give it a gas, Danny. Oh, boy, this is our busy day. anything like it. His car went zigzag from one side of the street to the other like the driver was drunk. And then it came right up on the sidewalk and crashed into the store here. What caused him to crash? Well, I, I, I really don't know, officer. Where did you first notice him? Up the street a piece. Uh, Nick Martin has his coffee pot. He was eating a mess of mushrooms. The mushrooms? In a coffee pot lunchroom? Yeah, yeah, I, I thought it was funny. Nick don't serve us no mushrooms. Did Nick seem to know this man? Yeah, yeah. This guy says to Nick, Nick, you sure know how to cook mushrooms. And Nick says, I cook them special for you, Mr. Goodman. Every Tuesday, 
I make special for you myself these mushrooms. And this guy here says, sure there ain't no toadstools among them. You know, toadstools is poison. <laughs> uh, so I've heard. Yeah, yeah. And then when I came out, this guy was getting in his car. And like I said, pulled out in front of me. Yes, and now look at him. The poor devil is dead. Yes, Mike. This looks like a case of murder. You've had a busy day. Yes, Doc, and an interesting one. Uh, what did you find out at the hospital? They performed an autopsy on Goodman and found evidence of food poisoning. Well, who was he? He was head of the S&M Poultry Company. Mm, that's one of the companies who've been fighting the poultry racket, isn't it? That's right. Uh, and where does Nick Martinez, the restaurant man, come into the picture? Now, what motive would he have for plotting the death of one of his customers? That's what the Blue Beetle is going to find out tonight. How? Oh. Next brother, Julio, is a wealthy importer of fancy groceries and foodstuffs. He has a sort of a dude ranch out beyond the city limits. Uh, what's that newsboy calling? I don't know, Doc. I'll see you in just a moment. Get your latest steaks, Jerry. Eat all the food here. Yeah, boy. Give me one of those. Yes, sir. Here you are. Thank you. Extra. Uh, what's the paper say, Danny? Banker Williamson, president of the Drovers and Provision Dealers Bank, was killed by a bomb which blew up his car when he stepped on the starter. My, my, my. And he was one of our finest citizens. An honest, straightforward businessman. Now, who could have wanted him out of the way? I don't know. But Julio Martinez, Nick's brother, is one of the directors of the bank. And he may know. Well, what are you going to do? The Blue Beetle is going to ask Mr. Julio Martinez a few questions. And waste no time about it. So long, Doc. Don't wait up for me. And don't worry. The Blue Beetle may be out till dawn. <laughs> ah, Conchita, you're one cute senorita. Come, give Julio the big kiss. Conchita, eh? like to be rich man, the big kiss. Mm. Is that good, no? No. Oh, my mother, it is not good. It's not big enough. Oh, huh? Then here is a bigger one. Oh. Ah, that is better. Tomorrow you will begin to make much money with this kiss. Conchita like that. What Conchita do? Conchita meet with rich man. Who will not do what Julio wants? Yes. She to make rich man's wife jealous. Oh, me. I like to make other women jealous. That is fun. See, Conchita will have much fun, but not this rich man. <laughs> uh, Pedro. Si, senor. Wine for Conchita. Si, si, senor. And tell Mexico Pete I like for him to do tricks with his laria. Uh, si, senor. I bring him pronto. And now, my friends, we will eat, huh? Eh? Yeah. For you, my brother Nick, he has made chili con carne. And his specialty, mushrooms a la martinez. Uh, uh, what is his song? It's the Blue Beetle signature. He must be here. He is here. And uh, what, may I ask, is the cause for your visit to me, Blue Beetle? This is not the masquerade party. These are my friends and... Uh, Hired thugs and murderers. Who make strange accusations, masquerader. And annoying ones. They are greatly outnumbered, sir, knight in blue armor. But depart before I... Before you what? Before I call the police. The police are already on their way here. The police are consistent and unlike the police. Francio! Why at everybody? We are respectable citizens. We do not fear the police. Why have you called them, Masquerada? To pick up the murderers of Banker Williamson, the poisoner of Samuel Goodman, the rotten gang of racketeering crooks. Grab him, men! Hello! Bring the machete! Put that gun down, Pedro. And you're next, Julio. And as for you, Nick, with your machete, I'm allergic to knives, so drop it. Don't try to run away, Julio. I want you as a special guest for the police. Ah, ah, good work, Pete. Rip the blue beetle with your lariat. Eh? What I do now, senor. Sit on him and put gag in his mouth. Ah, we... I have his hands in your boss. Try them, Pedro. Pete, si. throw your lariat over that beam there and haul the blue beetle up by his feet. Then tie the end of the lariat to the post on the stairway. Si, senor, I do. But my lariat, she is good one. No, I will buy you another one. 
Everybody will go out by the back way. Take the car and go to my yacht. I will join you there as soon as I have done away with this blue beetle. What will you do with him, eh? Let him hang by his feet from the rafter until the police arrive. For a long time, they have wished to capture the blue beetle. I, Julio Martinez, make them present of the blue beetle. <laughs> What will happen when the police arrive? Will they capture the Blue Beetle? Or will he free himself and escape to pick up the trail of Julio Martinez and his gang of murderous racketeers? These questions will be answered in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.